Hey guys, welcome back to another kit video. This is going to be my MK23 build video. So this one's going to be a fairly long one. We're going to go over quite a lot. Some bits I've already pre-assembled, pre-cleaned, pre-readied, and we're just going to dive straight in. And we're going to pull this thing apart because I want to use it. Um, I want to use it kind of this weekend. And I don't really have a lot of time before now and then to actually kind of play this build out. So I need to take the opportunity. Let's get it done. Uh, we're going to dive right in. So um, this is the STTI ST23 MK23. I'm going to do some kind of general changes as I'm building it, as well as some kind of non-standard changes. So first things first, I need to pop the bin out there. There is a new one, so it's obviously very stiff so that's going to be the first issue i'm going to have with the uh with the gun now let's see if we can just pop that out oh stiff but it's out that's the slide release pin out so now that will slide forwards and it should come off from there. So this is the insides of my MK23. They're quite dry. They look like they've changed a little, a little bit from the last time I had it apart. So what I will do is I probably will, when I come to rebuild, just drop some lube in there. I can see in there the uh, mag release mechanism. Yeah, I'm going to drop some lube in there when we rebuild and, and we'll go from there. But for now... Most of the concentration is going to be on this part here. So, uh, pretty standard looking, apart from the uh, polystyrene which is in here. That's going to be cleaned out. So, I've got to kind of remember how to take one of these things apart. Uh, something like that, I think. Uh, possibly not. Possibly. You'd have thought I'd have kind of learned how to do this before hopping on a cam and doing it, but you know, never say, uh, never say prepared. It's not, uh, it's not something I normally do too much. Oh, come on, baby. You're loose. You're loose. There we go. We're out. So, there's a uh, there we go, polystyrene's out there. That's my slide. This is the upper. So I'm just checking that now for kind of like a nil. One side is kind of nilled and one isn't. So this is the plain side. This is the nilled side. I'm going to have to undo that to, to take that off. I'm going to have to remove the hop housing here as well. And we are going to take that apart as well as we go. So this just comes off just kind of just lift one side and the whole thing comes off little spring on here which pushes it back up hot plate and then the beast so what i'm going to do with that i'm going to flip that over because we need to punch out this way a roll of tape is always extremely handy because they're really hardy and what will help massively is a real punch so this is going to be the first time i've ever taken an mk23 apart properly using a punch. I've normally tried to hit it with Allen keys and screwdrivers and all other manners of incorrect tooling. So this one is the first one I'm actually doing properly. So I'm semi-hopeful it's going to work well. And what do you know? It did. So what I need to do now is I need to be very aware that the nilled side is on the side closest to me. So I will actually sort that. Oh, that came off really easy. They don't normally come off that easy. I'm gonna drop that in through there so that I've got some kind of place marker and move that out of the way. I'm so happy about that. Like, I was really dreading doing that on camera. I thought it was gonna take me absolutely forever to do, but it worked really well, so. Uh, this is a one-time build. It's quite late at night when I'm shooting this. 
Uh, I've struggled to sleep the past few days, so I thought I'll come down and I'll, I'll get my MK build on because I am I'm going to be playing. Whoop. Yeah, um, a weekend coming very very soon, so I do want to just get this thing built up so that I can have a a play with it and even if nothing else, kind of like range it and get my uh, hop set. Hoping to shoot some fours with this in time, but I think I may have to go three sixes initially. So these screws are being a bit of a pain, which isn't a good sign. Normally that's a sign that they're kind of rounding. We'll just have a little janky pull on it. No. Okay, let's up my screwdriver game a little bit. This is where I struggle a bit to do it on camera because I need to hold it over there for you guys. There we go. I know these these screws are quite long, but if they're threaded from factory, they will just stick in and they just won't go anywhere. So you kind of have to put a little bit of tension on to get them moving. Yeah, this back one's okay, I think. And it falls apart just like that. So those screws are probably going to be okay at that. So what that's actually done for me there is that's stripped it apart. So you've got the, the spring which sits on top of the hop housing. You've got your hop arm which has already got a really good bend in it. And you've got the hop wheel which is fairly standard fare. And then we've got the STTI aluminium barrel with a booking which is absolutely doused in oil. So if you were going to take this out of the box and try and shoot it, you're probably not going to get very great results. So I'm just going to correct that spring on there because it's driving me mad already. So where are we going to go from here? So that's not too bad in there. Um, if I can find a clock. Ta-da! Just give that a bit of a mop out in there. It's not really going to be a part of the gun which is going to see a lot of oil, so we may as well do what we can for it. I'm a little bit bothered about those screws. Mm, they don't seem to be backing out of the plastic, but I can I can live with that. So let's move that out of the way. The first part I'm going to pop in here. This is my PDI barrel, and I've already installed the Autobot booking to that little bit of PTFE tape, just to hold it tight. And that's just going to sit in there quite nicely. And the next part of the kit, which I believe just sits on top actually, so I am fitting a TDC, so I don't actually need to install the hop arm back. I don't have to really install anything back into it that I don't want to now. Um, so it's going to have a uh, one of the new hop arm replacement jobby things. And I'm quite hopeful that that's going to be a huge improvement on what my last experience with an MK23 was. Which, to be fair, that wasn't a, a bad experience by any any means. That just doesn't seem to be... There we go. A bit like their high cappers, it just needs a bit of a wiggle to seat it. I don't think these screws are particularly great either, which isn't helping matters. Just gonna do what we can, just hold it together as best we can. I've got a funny feeling that they are really quite threaded. The stock. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna change from a very big screwdriver onto a very, very small screwdriver. And that's just gonna help me with feeling how much tension is on those screws. You don't have to, you know, kind of I want to use the word you don't have to dog the screws up tight because that's how you thread them. So just there, yeah, you get it to about a nip. So you're just nipping that a little bit and you've got to bear in mind that you're going to have your hop chamber thing over the top. Yeah, yeah, that'll do for that. So 
that's that's the hop chamber rebuilt. So we're going to open up that. I'm going to move that to one side. Spare parts can stay over there for a bit. I'll get rid of them in time. So this is the Stalker TDC unit. It's got Stalker written alongside it there. It's got one leg which hooks under, which I believe is different to the Hadron design, which has got two legs which hook under. And then we've got the arm job thing. Now the arm job thing, as far as I'm aware, wow, that booking looks twisted. Hmm. The arm job thing sits there like that. And then that will go over the top. There's so many people out there going, oh my god, no, Steve, you're doing it wrong. How do you fuck up an MK23? Like that is the answer. Just like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to test that. Screw that down a little bit. Urgh. Turn that over for you guys. Have a look down it. That's really off in one direction. <laughs> That's really pushing down on the left side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loose that back up all the way out. Just see if I can turn the barrel over a little bit. Just nip it back in. Have a look down at it again. Tighten back up. Nope, that's one-sided pressure. Very much one-sided pressure, that is. So this is where the, the annoyance comes with these kind of things, because you've got to do so much test and fit and test and fit, and off and on and off and on. And So it seems to be pushing down this side more. Although that looks almost straight now but my hop unit has come apart so as i i feared unfortunately those screws do look like they've threaded so my hop unit pushing itself apart isn't going to be helping that's probably what's giving that one-sided hop which is an absolute pain because this is a brand new hop unit and it's had no pressure at all put on it I don't even know of anybody who does replacement hop units. Well, that looks straight there. We'll try and rebuild it that. See the sc I can see the mark on that, and the the, the screw was hitting that absolutely dead center, perfect. So yeah, there's a, just a little bit of wiggle room on that. Maybe that's what I did wrong. Didn't build it. If I, what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to try and lean it that way. I know that's not the most exact, ah, there we go. I know it's not the most exact way of doing this, but if it gets me what I, what I need it to, then it's worth it. Could be that the plate jumped as I did that. Okay, we're in again. So we'll, we'll try and tighten up. Ooh. Okay, we'll try and tighten up again at that. Mm. Still not sold on that. I mean, that's really down on one side. I don't want to stick anything oily in there. That's not oily. It's really down. Um, if I can... There we go. Probably, yeah, you're going to struggle to see that, but it is is quite far down on this side and not on that side. It's almost like the booking's catching, but it is level. Looks like the barrel's rotated too far that way. I need to rotate it the other way. See what happens if I do that. I mean, that's an absolute extreme. It really is an extreme that it's never going to go that far over. 
but um so I've now turned the barrel over a bit and we're still doing the same thing that if a oh actually okay 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 that um that's better so it's significantly less one-sided that way now so i'm going to just give it another turn over that way it's just gentle movements like that hold that together just tighten that back down and uh, okay so weird scenario now the the booking is coming down flat so as you look at it now the booking is coming down flat but it does look almost like that so it's kind of angled but not i think that's almost passable and if that was tighter It's almost like it's too far in one direction. Let's uh, just whip this back off. I did say it was going to be a long one. <laughs> Slide that plate out. Let's just have a look at the wear on that plate. So that plate is being pushed absolutely dead center. So we're going to struggle to pick it up. Let's see if we can. So, on that plate, it's to the front, but it's absolutely dead center. So, I'm quite happy with the way that that's pushing down. What's struggling with is you can see there the booking is off, it's twisted. So, we're going to have to take this apart again. Seems like the front screw has gripped, just not the back screw. So I'm going to see if we can. Turn that a little bit. So I'm just looking down the barrel now, just trying to eye it in. I mean, that's not bad. I'm going to offer it up and in. I do remember it used to be a thing with these bookings that they were just the wrong size. And you had to trim them a bit for them to lock in properly. I wonder if that's what I'm falling foul of. Maybe. Well, this back screw's absolutely got no grip on it at all. It's just the whole unit is just kind of held together by screw juice. So that's not great. So a thing to pick up on that then is going to be how we remedy that going forwards. And the I believe the correct answer is going to be uh, super glue drop some super glue down into those holes and then tighten the super glue up uh, tighten, the super glue, tighten the screws up into the super glue i think is going to be the kind of the not the gold standard but clearly it working would be the gold standard but in a bad situation
Let's see how that goes. Bit of a rejiggle. Probably not going to do it a world ago, but yeah, same thing. Never know. Do you know what? It might actually work. So we can only test it. We can only test it. We can always take it apart again. We can come back here and retry it. So uh, that then will go back on here. These MKs are easy enough to take apart. So I've gone with a 133 mil in a barrel. And the reason I've done that is more for ease than anything else. I know you can do 150s and you can get a 150 to sit just flush of this, but um, so there's a couple of reasons I've not gone with the 150. I didn't want to be drilling this end cap out because, well, effort, uh, which is kind of the main one. And then the other reason, tiny, tiny, minute difference, I know, but I'm losing a bit of my suppressor. I bought a, a really good suppressor, so I kind of want to use my really good suppressor to its full. So that's that's why we've I've done what I've done with the uh, with the barrel. Plus PDI didn't make a 150 barrel in this cup. So this may make quite a noise on the microphone. I do apologise. side that's come in flip it back one more pound in it's loud but that's uh that's in now bonk a little bit disappointed it's kicking that one side but i might even look at shimming it or something again it's more more fun to have down the line it's been a cheap build so far so we can we can put up with that so that's that's the hop and barrel set done. The next one I'm going to look at sits in here. So we're going to pull down on that, which releases this nozzle housing, flip it over, and then it's this which I'm going after. Uh, not that. That's quite cool. It's the, the spring in here, which isn't a favourite of mine, so we'll have that out. Now there is a way of getting these out. Can't bloody for the life I remember what it was exactly. But what we'll do is we'll just push down on it a little bit. What I don't want to do is snap this rod. So I'm going to very carefully use my punch, which is just too wide. Let's punch down and let's see if you can see what's going on there. Looks to be glued at this front here. Oh god, that spring's really bad. Look at that. It's really stretched out just from that. In fact, that's yeah, you can see the glue there. So what I'm gonna do is just get a small screwdriver in there. Just dig at that glue. Probably heat it out or alcohol it out. My tiredness levels probably won't allow me to do that right now. So I kind of need to get this bad boy out by hook or by crook. That's the only way that will come out as well, isn't it? If we dig that up, I think it's got to come out from this end. There we go. So yeah, there's a lot of glue on that. This spring is going to go flying. No, it's not. So I'm trying to be as careful as I can not to bend this rod. There we go. Rod's out. Spring is an absolute mess. I'm going to just take that out. 
from the glue bar. Out. So that's out. So the nozzle's now loose, which is okay. And then the WeTech 180% spring. So this is what forces that nozzle back and gives it a really nice snappity action. So we're gonna there you go. Stick that on there. A bit more polystyrene. Stick that end in there. And then that spring already has so much more life in it than the old one. So what we can't do is we can't test this spring while it's out. But what we can do is we can just drop it back in. Into the housing here. Click it up into place like that. Oh yeah. Wham. Wham bam. So, that is pretty much this MK23 done. That's it. I remember how you do it now. It's coming back to me. You uh, kind of do a like a push-pull kind of thing with your thumb and fingers. and You've got to get that lined up into there. Then it hooks back. Uh -huh. Just need to give away a little bit. There we go. That's in. So that's done. So then, as discussed, I'm going to just dob a little bit of oil down into here. These arms in specifically. And then anything that moves. Down there. Then just work that in. Cool. So then, magic moment. Pop this back together. We. That's what you've got to watch out for now. It's because we've changed that spring. There's a bit of downward pressure on here. So we can't push down on this bit. We've got to kind of keep it up and fixed. When I had an ASG one of these, it just refused to go back together. It's completely refused to go back together always. Very much like this one's doing right now. It's just an art, isn't it? Getting back used to them again. Oh, we're getting there. Nope. Nope. So, got to go in about there somewhere. Can't be there. Stop pushing down on that. That looks to be stopping it. Looks to be eating it actually. There we go. Sat down. Pull it back. That's incredibly tight. I kind of like how tight that is, but it's gonna absolutely piss me off something rotten, I know that. That's in. Works as a safe as well. That's it. It's done. I know there's some more silencing mods that we can do. I fully know that I'm going to be readdressing that hop unit at some point. I'm probably going to be ordering a Novrich replacement for that at some point as well. Um, overall, quite happy with it. If I can get that plate to sit flat, or I mean, to be fair, I don't mind if the plate doesn't sit flat as long as the BBs fly straight. That's the important thing. So the next the next steps with this now are going to be to give it a bit of an alcohol clean off, and I'm going to just do kind of like a top end wrap in some jack pike tape just to try and camo it up a bit, and uh, that's probably not going to be done on camera. So that's the kind of the bulk of the build. Obviously, as it breaks or as it 
as it doesn't behave it's going to need to be reshuffled and resorted and retaken apart so i'm going to be back on cam doing that but if you made it through my initial mk23 build thank you very much please do drop me a like if you liked my content drop me a comment if i've done anything wrong or not quite right and uh and the absolute gold standard as always guys please do drop me a sub if you're not already subscribed to my channel I bring out weekly content, I try and make it as, as entertaining as possible, and I try to cover a lot of different topics. Variation is going to be a big thing this year. Thank you very much, and I will catch you in the next one.